All right, so here's another question, uh, question 21 from the 2019 paper. And it's kind of hard to read right now. It says a 0 0.80 meter length of steel wire and a 1.4 meter length of brass wire are joined together. The combined wires are suspended from a fixed support and a force of 40 newtons is applied as shown. The ion modulus of steel is 2.0 by 10 to the 11 pascals. The ion modulus of brass is 1.0 by 10 to the 11 pascals. Note how on the chalkboard today, I put the stress in gigapascals because those are sort of typical units for most materials. So see how these numbers are really big for the ion modulus, right? So 10 to the nine is a giga. And so this is, you know, you could, you could write this as gigapascals. Okay, this would be what, 200 gigapascals, 100 gigapascals. Each wire has a cross-sectional area of 2.4 by 10 to the negative six square meters. So a square meter would be like if I took a meter ruler and another meter ruler and I built a square out of it, that's a big area. These are tiny wires, and so it's a millionth, right? 2.4 millionth a square meter. So really, really tiny areas you might expect for something like a wire. We're trying to calculate the total extension. And we don't have to consider like, well, this brass has you know, weight and it's gonna stretch the steel too. They're saying, ignore the weight of the wire. Like just, just the only force is the 40 Newton force. So they're saying you have permission to just consider that force alone, not like the weight of these things. Note that all of our answers are pretty tiny, 10 to the negative four, you know, and they're, and they're not so different from each other. That is the type of question we could just look at the answers and go, oh, that's the only reasonable one, right? Like they're all pretty close together. We actually have to calculate. Sometimes the questions will be conceptual, you know, no calculation necessary. So let's write down what we're given and kind of make use of the figure here. They tell us the length of this steel. So I'll put L. Let me grab my writing tool. So here we have the steel, and I'm going to call it L for original length. And that one is 0 0.8 meters. And the length of my brass was 1.4 meters. You may have already sort of realized what we're going to do is use the Young Modulus equation to calculate the extension for each one and then just add them up. And if that's the way that you thought we should go about it, awesome. That's exactly what we need to do. I don't think there's another way to, to solve it. And so let's remind ourselves that what the young modulus is telling us. So the young modulus, we use letter E for that, just like we do for energy, other things. And so the young modulus is equal to force over area, over extension over original length, right? So it's the stress over the strain. We've said that as kind of a shortcut, we can just say it's the force times the original length over the area times the extension. And what we kind of want to do is rewrite this to make the extension the subject, because we know we're solving for that, right? They ask us like, hey, what's the extension? Rather than putting all of these long scientific notation numbers in and manipulating those, let's do our math with letters. And I know that that's what students sometimes don't like to do, right? And it's like, I like my math with numbers, but it really is easier to just kind of, you know, what do we need to multiply to kind of get X all by itself? So I would want to multiply this side of the equation by A, over FL. Am I allowed to do that because it's convenient? Just multiply this by A over FL? No and yes. No, you're not allowed to just multiply something by A over FL unless you do it to the other side. Then you are allowed. That's algebra, right? What you do to one side, do the other. So if I multiply the right side of this equation by the quantity A over FL, um, well, no because then X is in the denominator. Let's multiply both sides by X. Let's, let's, in fact, yeah, we'll do the old algebra switcheroo. That guy can trade places with that guy. <laughs> they don't teach you that in algebra class, but what they do teach you is you can multiply both sides by X, you can divide both sides by E. We want X in the numerator, right? So that's not good multiplying by A over FL, then we just know the inverse of X. We wanna know X. So multiply both sides by X, divide both sides by E, and we will realize that X should equal, on the tip of everybody's tongue, let's say it together.
Yeah, everybody on YouTube couldn't hear because not everybody's mic, but there was a, a lot of enthusiasm in the room for FL over AE, and everyone was really excited that we were able to make X the subject of this equation. And now, you know, every viewer is like, I wish I was there. Like, you're, you're, you're able to, to relive these fun memories um, as many times as you want to, you know, just hit stop, rewind it, press play again. All right, so that's what we're doing for each one of these, right? We're just calculating the extension for the steel, for the brass, adding them up, and we hopefully get one of these answers. All right, so I'm going to say the extension for my steel is the force times the original length divided by the area and divided by the young modulus. Likewise, the extension for my brass is going to be the same force, right? The 40 Newton is the force. Its length, this one, over the same cross-sectional area. It's like, thank goodness they didn't give us an extra added layer of difficulty with this. Like, this could have been in millimeters. We'd have to convert. They could have just given us, like, the diameter, and then we have to calculate the area from that. So those are the other types of sort of um, levels of difficulty that, that are typical of this type of problem. Like, they could just give us the diameter. Like, what would we measure in the lab? We, we'd measure the diameter of this, and we have to know what the radius is, and pi r squared would be the cross-sectional area, the, the cross-sectional area of the circle. And then the young modulus for each of these is going to be different. Remember, we got to be sure to plug in the correct one for the steel and the correct one for the brass, right? And so these are really, like, I've labeled them all the same, same, but you could say, like, there's a little subscript, like, this is the extension for the steel for the brass. Since I'm writing them just next to it, I can kind of keep track of it that way. It's really up to you as the person, you know, doing the calculation, like, well, what makes sense to you? All right, so we got 40 Newtons. I got 0.8 meters divided by 2.4 by 10 to the negative six meters squared for the cross-sectional area. And this is my steel, which has a young modulus of two by 10 to the 11 Pascals. Remember Pascal is a Newton per meter squared. So in the denominator, like the meter squared cancels and I have Newtons and that's gonna cancel with this one. So I'm left with meters, which is a good unit for extension. Remember the units will always kind of take care of you to make sure you should get what you're, you expect to, what you're solving for if you plug everything in correctly. So the units sort of work out here like they should. While you guys are um, getting the calculators out, I'm going to set up this one here and then we'll, we'll compare notes in a moment. So they, we don't have to consider the weight of the brass or the steel wires themselves, just the 40 Newton uh, force. The brass was 1.4 meters long. Same cross-sectional area. And a young modulus half of that steel, right? 1.0 by 10 to the 11. Pascals. Right. Okay. 40 times 0.8 equals 32 divided by 2.4 by 10 to the negative 6. And then divide that by 2 times 10 to the 11. Make sure when you're dividing by values in scientific notation and a calculator, you're using grouping symbols. So I get 6.6 .6 repeating by 10 to the negative five for the steel. So the steel with a 40 Newton weight attached to it would extend 6.7 by 10 to the negative five meter. How about the brass? 40 times 1.4 is 56 divided by open parentheses 2.4 times 10 to the negative six, close parentheses equals divided by open parentheses one times 10 raised to the 11, close parentheses equals. And I get the extension for the brass over there to be 2.3 repeating by 10 to the negative four meters. If I keep that in my calculator and add 6. Point, um, 6 repeating times 10 to the negative 5, 
I get 2.9999, which is basically 3 by 10 to the negative 4 meters, which is choice B. It's, it's always good when you see the answer you calculate as one of the multiple choice you know, selections, but that doesn't guarantee you did it right. It just means like, well, I either, you know, did something right that then I made a mistake that led to this typical incorrect answer, right? Because it's always put an answer where it's like you can do something that's nearly right, but it, it's, it's, you know, still wrong. Um, so let's check the mark scheme. This is question 21 from the same paper I think we just had it queued up a moment ago. We're looking for 21B. Hold on a second. It's interfering. 21B. There you go. Right? And you can clearly see all that working, but it's a little bit better like that. All right. And that's a really good um, sample question, worked example problem that is relevant to the essential question of the day. How do I define and use stress strain and modulus? Note that embedded within the definition of modulus is stress and strain. We can just kind of put them all together because the modulus is the ratio of those two things. 